Minister, um, this is a, a great ambition of yours to open all schools in September or, or late August, uh, and it's something we need to work uh, towards. Uh, but I'm asking you what financial package will be made available in order to make this happen. Um, we know from other sectors when announcements have been made that there have been uh, financial packages put forward, and that is welcome and that is the right thing to do. But I think it is justifiable for us to ask if the government are serious about opening schools in September or late August, what financial package they're going to put in place for this to happen. Because it won't be cheap, it won't be inexpensive, uh, this will be a, a building, an environment that will be under huge scrutiny from parents, from school managers, from teachers, as to how safe it is. So what kind of financial measure are you putting in place? And again, I make the call, and it's made here every week, uh, and you have been very responsive to us, Minister. You've been here most weeks answering questions as to what can we do to ensure that schools will not be uh, suffering as a result of lack of teaching staff because they're losing teachers over the course of the summer. Uh, and in many instances, that's going to be a major uh, impact on their ability to open in September in the way that they would have liked to. The second question I want to ask you, Minister, uh, is about school meals. Now, you have a ready-made go-to answer for me, which is not, it's not your department. And I appreciate that. You've mentioned what other schools are doing in terms of school opening. You've mentioned that you're talking to other schools, uh, other, other ministers in other countries about school opening, and that's what ministers should do. Every other jurisdiction in these islands have committed to continuing the school meals programme over the summer. In Northern Ireland, in Scotland, in Wales, and the most high-profile case was, was in England. All of them have recognised that vulnerable children are going to go hungry if the school meals programme doesn't continue over the summer. Now, in fairness to the government, they recognised this at Easter time, and the school meals programme continued over the two weeks of Easter. And the schools rallied round, and the teaching staff and the SNAs rallied round. The whole school community made it work, and it was made work. And I put in a parliamentary question purely to get clarity that it would continue over the summer, and I was surprised and I was disappointed to discover that it is not the intention or the plan to continue the school meals programme over the summer. Now, why is it needed? Well, in any economic collapse, Minister, as you will know, unemployment rises. We have heard that the cases of domestic violence have risen. Cases of addiction have risen. There is huge mental health strain on families. And in that circumstance, it is inevitable that families go under huge strain, financial strain, and decisions are made, children lose out, and children go hungry. Now, it isn't necessarily a comfortable topic to talk about in Irish society about children being hungry. Uh, but they are. And it's going to happen this summer. And what the School Meals Programme has done is provided regular, routine, nutritious uh, food uh, for children. Now, I know you to be a, a, a decent uh, politician. I know the Minister for Social Protection to be a decent person. This should absolutely not be an opposition versus government over and back party political football. What I'm asking you to do is to be an ally in this call. What I'm asking you to do is to commit to speak or to meet with the Department of Social Protection or the Minister for Social Protection over the coming days and to make an announcement that the school meals programme will continue in July and in August. 
it would be, at the most, a 10 million euro decision. But I think this week, as this current administration uh, goes out of office, and we assume it's the last week of this current administration, I think if it is one of the last decisions it will make, it will be an extremely welcome one. And I think you and Minister uh, Doherty will be uh, extremely uh, congratulated from right across these houses for making that decision. So, Minister, you do have the get-out clause of standing here in front of me and saying, it's not my department, it's about, it's about somebody else. But I would like you to stand and say, look, I think the point you're making is a valid one. I think what the INTO and the Children's Rights, are, uh, Rights Alliance are saying about school meals are valid points. Uh, I agree with those valid points, and I will take them and I'll do what I can over the coming days. If you were to say that much, you know, uh, I think that would be a fair, a, a fair thing for you to say. Because I think you appreciate that, particularly where, where you're from, that children in Derry getting school meals over the summer and children in Donegal not getting them. But they're go to, both going through the same pandemic. They're both going through the same crisis. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm, I suppose I'm appealing to the government to make, to make uh, that decision, uh, as has been made in Northern Ireland, as has been made in Scotland, as has been made uh, in Wales. Um, because none of us want to be in a situation uh, where families are struggling, making decisions on bills, um, and, and the, what loses out is the fact that the child uh, goes hungry and the humiliation of that minister. I know you'll appreciate this, but there's an absolute bone-crushing, spirit-crushing spirit humiliation that goes with hunger. It's not just the lack of a meal. It's the, lack of, it's the lack of a future that goes with it. And resentment can build into that. And anger can build into that. And it really has a deeply wounding effect on a child who is, who is hungry. Uh, so with that, Minister, I, I'd appreciate your response. Deputy Minister, to respond. Yeah, um, uh, Gormag, I get chatted for Honey and the Gahesh, took us in Ked Kesh, be to a graph for the and Costa Tigesh for the then Busage, Idra, the Monskullen, the Gusna Manskullen, Oskal, Jimmy Man Four to the cart and cart Dogget, being Costas, New Small, August Shinanfa. Uh, grow uh, Cora on an ish other deeper Augus uh, Marin Hain uh, for the den and plan Erin uh, and Ked Bala Acha uh, and Dara Darna Bala uh, Nerevean plan Lakela Augus a Brach Nu Erin uh, Narakti Okna on the um, the the plan that I get for for Honya Martin for and Scola and the Scola and the Oskil she more uh, uh, lava ni no the the Rakti Ella that I get for us to because to me she can't you have gave and costed costed a gear in his arja or the shin and fan or a vima jiglord slash mukolakia surreal dish and chat and chew heart vima jigra le pascal donahue gave can you more the ye for the uh, the rotation? So just your first question uh, you raised in relation to the cost. Uh, you're right. There will be a massive cost in in relation to uh, schools returning fully and having the proper um, guidelines in place and necessary infrastructure around that to ensure teachers uh, and teaching staff and and students are safe also. So look. The engagement is ongoing now between Deeper. The memo I brought to government last week um, outlined very, very clearly uh, that there will be a decision to be made and an approval from Deeper for this exceptional cost. Uh, the second issue you raised uh, in the minute that I've left, um, the school meals programme, as you correctly pointed out, um, kicked into gear at very short notice last Easter. And at the time, we were uh, very much indebted, obviously, to the, for the schools for being so you, they adapted to it so re, so quickly. But also, there was a big voluntary engagement as well. Some schools used the local GA club and different voluntary groups, and I know and, and Post as well uh, stepped up to the challenge. So, so I'm uh, having the conversation uh, with uh, Minister Doherty. Um, we are looking to do something in this area. Uh, I appreciate you raising it here today as well, and I think something like this is not uh, a political issue to be uh, tossed across the Dáil Chamber, and I appreciate that, Deputy, and I certainly uh, would be interested in hearing even your own viewpoints in relation to how we do this, 
uh, because, as you know, the, the schools have been under enormous pressure in terms of dealing with the whole calculated grades process. Um, and the 200 plus schools that have been registered for the summer-based provision, we will provide schools. Uh, we will provide school meals for those summer-based provision, um, and for the the, the Jesh schools involved um, in the summer camps as well. So that will be covered anyway. But look, if you have any ideas uh, or suggestions around how we do this, and my my instinct is that there's a great capacity out there at a community level as well, whether it's youth groups, whether it's community Thanks, groups, maybe um, there could be some sort of support there in terms of, of trying to uh, distribute the food as well, because uh, uh, it's Thanks. something that, that, that I would like to, like to support. Minister. Deputy Gary 